And so, on to our next speaker. Um, as I briefly introduced before, it's uh, Dr. Liu, who is our speaker for this morning, and who is also the founder of the CSR, uh, CSR Thought Laboratory. And so, yeah, now, Dr. Liu. Good afternoon. So, the organizer has given me this topic to talk about how to make the CSR a case study that can we well accept it inside the enterprise and get the budget. It seems like a very simple Q and A, but to answer that question involves a lot of aspects. So next. I'm going to share with you how do we take a comprehensive approach when we are considering such a question. First of all, we need to have the right starting point. If you don't have a right starting point, you will encounter difficulties and obstacles. We're talking about sustainability or promote sustainability through CSR. And what is sustainability? Simply put, it is to meet the requirement demands of the modern people and when without compromising the needs of the future generations. Only in that way we can call it sustainability. For a business, it needs to do things favorable for the people, for the country, for the business. That means while the enterprise is developing, they need to be fair beneficial uh, for the local community, for the development of the country, and also for the long-term growth of the enterprise as well. Based on that concept, I feel CSR should have a very good strategy. And what is the foundation for that? It should be the core values of the enterprise. As a business, what is, what are the major areas of the business activities, and what is the effective platform between the enterprise and the stakeholders? And for these three parts, that builds up the supporting points of CSR strategy and the values of their business means why does this business exist and what's the difference from other enterprises and when you're comparing different enterprises you will see differences when we have the core values the key areas such as and uh, Rio Rinto, they, they are a mining company. Their core value is to continuously identify, exploit, and convert natural resources so that it can become a value creation process favorable for the humankind. Nike, what are their core values? The core values of Nike is not how many sportswear and sports shoes they have manufactured. Actually, the core value is about the sports culture. And the core values has to work together with CSR. Only in that way, you would be able to find the powers of CSR. So what is the key areas of mining companies? Their key areas is exploiting gold, silver, or copper mines. And for when we have such values and key areas, we can build an effective platform. Next step would be management of such strategy and utilization of the platform 
So we need to have long-term and effective dialogue so that we can continuously identify effective good projects that are suitable for continuous development of the enterprise. And during the dialogue, we also ne need to have joint activities and also feedback and checking and improvement through this process, we can have a mutual trust system with mutual trust all our CSR and sustainability projects will be able to implement it. In order to ensure long-term operation of this system, we need to have complete processes and rules for HSEC approaches and processes. So this chart actually shows you as a CSR project, it needs to have a starting point with such a cycle. So how do we choose a CSR project? First of all, for any CSR project, it needs to have stakeholders sitting together for negotiation. It shouldn't be the Department of the External Affairs or PR Department or Publicity Department of the Enterprise thinking on their own without participation in any other stakeholders and while they are identifying a good CSR project, we need to look at the stakeholders. Where are their interests lying? Can I use this one? Laser pointer. I cannot use it. Okay. So I'll use my hand. On the left side of this chart, I focus on the stakeholder interests and analyze them. On the, the other side, we also need to see the business priorities. What are the most urgent, most critical parts? If we combine both sides together, through communication with stakeholders and further include the activities of stakeholders and the activities of the enterprise together, we can have a basic framework of the CSR projects. So what is the process of filtering the CSR projects? So we need to prioritize issues based on significant and potential impacts on business and stakeholders. And, and we also need to use the filtered thoughts and confirm once again with the stakeholders according to the related areas of CSR like compliance, health, and community development, and HR development and partnership for these good directions, we can list it in this sphere. You can see among the listed items, it will be easier to identify the most urgent and most important items. I can give an example. According to what I have said, the starting point is very important. If we include CSR into the core values of the enterprise and the key areas of the enterprise, so through communication of both sides, we can sort out 
a series of projects. I can give you this example. For example, this circle shows the key areas of CSR. For example, like Rio Rinto. Every year,、uh, they would purchase a lot of mining equipment from China, in order to make these、uh, mining equipment and clone trucks and large equipment to meet the requirements of low-cost exploitation of Rarinto. They need to establish very strong and powerful suppliers to ensure quality. Timely delivery. We know for large equipment, the lead time is very long. Apart from the manufacturing, it also so because of the design and assembly, and real rental takes safety and health as their requirements, a specification. And include them into the negotiation and agreement with the supplier. From the source, they can ensure the materials of the suppliers are energy-saving, safe, and healthy. So, in the design process, they incorporate CSR concepts and standards into the equipment. In that way, the equipment provided by the suppliers to Rarinto will meet their business development requirements. Meanwhile, also enhance the design capability and manufacturing capability of the supplier, and thus also enhancing their competitiveness on the market. After the delivery of the first batch of machines, the supplier's competitiveness has significantly been improved. Their orders are increasing rapidly. And for KPMG, as a consulting company, they choose the key area as intelligence. So they deem themselves as knowledge-based company. So they take a series of CSR activities. And also work together with a lot of young people and the communities. They combine the capabilities of those young people. That also provides talent resources for their future development. That also combines their CSR project with the, their community activities. Next, let's discuss about. About this, that where this starting point and where this integration、uh, processes, how do we measure a CS project's ROI? For any input, it will have payback. With an input, then you will have a result. How can we measure this return of investment? You need to evaluate based on three issues. First of all, compliance. Under the framework of compliance, a company will be able to run smoothly. The second is competitive advantages. With competitive advantage. A company will have its voice heard prior to other competitors. It would be able to have better ROIs. The third one is community values. These are the values created by the company to the society. So, for these three factors, ROI is a specific factor. You need to understand the return of investment. You need to do a profound analysis. For competitive advantage, usually ROI is based on the economic performance. This is very thoroughly done already. 
you invest in the project, and you will get paid off. For example, during the production stage, a company may need a lot of chemicals. For these chemicals, they are raw materials and covering 30% of the overall cost. Through good equipment and good high-tech, you'll be able to recollect these chemicals afterwards. If the recollection can be reaching 90% or 99%, that saved a lot of cost. 20% of the cost will be eliminated. In addition, it will also reduce the emission, further reducing the burden. So its value is not only in the economy, but also the society and environmental protection. For compliance, we don't have to do the ROI because it is compulsory. For competitive advantage, we have existing stimulations, simulations to run. The most difficult part is about social value. How can you find a right measurement for social value? It correlates with the microenvironment, the imaging and the branding of a company, etc. For these factors, it's very hard to be quantified. We have Professor Mao talking about it already in the morning. Right for now, we don't have the right methodology yet, but we do can use some of the tools. I would like to introduce two of the tools that we are trying to use. First of all, social return on investment. SROI. SROI. It's created by the Social Resource Research Institute. The founder is Roman Nicholas. He wrote a book like this. The book is titled There is No Business Like Social Business. In this book, he talked about the methodology for social return on investment. This concept started to introduce into China in 2010. Many scholars, experts are trying to study and deepen its application into China. To keep it simple, using this, techno using this technique, we want to introduce in the company that can create values for both employees and the society. We will use a structured way to analyze it and try to find specific quantified data. Look at the whole value chain. It will go through input, activity, and outcome, then impact. SROI is used to analyze each detail. Under each stage, what is the right methodology to marketize what you do? In the end, you get it divided by the impact. You will be able to get the social outcome. During marketization, there are many ways we can use. You can calculate it based on the time opportunity. If you do this, in comparison, you haven't done this. What are the differences? You can also compare it in what if I do it now, but there are better ways in the future. You can also do it through questionnaire, research and studies, etc. For many companies and for the government authorities, this method has been applied. For the donating companies, if I have a CSR program, you want to donate it to the society, you can use it this way. And for the independent NGOs, other institutions, they are also using these tools. Some institutions are also using a similar way for different purposes. For a company, it can help you more reasonably explain the value by doing something. 
for NGO, it can help you to evaluate the social benefits of this program. You will be able to explain to the donator main body more subjectively. For the industry institution, you can set up new policies according to the data. We don't have enough time to elaborate, but if you are interested, we can talk afterwards. SNS and the new media has posed great change to CSR as well. CSR project can also be promoted to a larger area through SNS. As for new media, we have many different pathways. So here we have a results model. Through this different methodology, PR and Newswire would be able to quantify the social impact during communication from which you do something and you want have many people to know. About your information, can you deliver the message to who your target? We can control it through the media channel, industry, the number who get to know your media. We will be able to evaluate how reachable this information are to the consumers. Next stage is interaction. By understanding how interested the consumer is willing to participate, by estimating how many hours they read, by quantifying how many downloading it happens to one individual, you will be able to evaluate the influential power during the interaction. From a social networking point of view, we can also measure it based on how many times this post has been forwarded to others or to be commented on. For a WeChat message, for a post on the microblog, how fast can it get exposed to the public? All of this can be measured through different methodology. Longevity, we call it long tail effect. It can also be used to value and measure how this information is visible to the public. We will be able to find the keywords for certain messages. Last but not least, you can also do the valuation through the real transaction. For example, for some users, after viewing the communication method through content, the online and offline transaction volume can be going up as well. But anyway, the charity types of work cannot be can't be measurable in CSR perspective. I would like to inspire further discussion. As a CSR manager and a CSR responsible person, if you want to get it recognized by the company organization as a whole, what should we do? We need to do all of this work as much as we can. For a CSR program, how do we know it's good or not? As a CEO, if a manager send me a report, I want to see these following factors. If you cover all of the content, you probably will be able to persuade me, so I will grant a green light for you in the budget. We need to look at do you have a positive impact to the bottom line of the corporate culture? Can you do something good to the bottom line of the company? Secondly, I need to take a look at whether the strategy is in line with the corporate strategy as a whole. The more closer it is, the more likely 
I will recognize your project. I gave example about KPMG and the Rio Tinto. They chose the project based on the core business value and other different fields. Out of the company strategy, I will need to see whether they are linked as well. For example, Goldman Sachs, a very important company, when it firstly got into China, not many people know about it. Back then, the strategy was, in the shortest period of time, get it recognized by Chinese society and to further expand its business. Under such a strategy, Goldman Sachs spent two to three years organizing a lot of social events. Many leaders from community, university, the community joined their social event through a organized high-frequent event. Good massacres got well received in a very short period of time, and the business further expanded. Good massacres had very good performance, as always. For a project. Whether the influential power is enough, if a project has only very limited target audience, like Mr. Mao had said, company is not there to serve people. A company is there to create value while serving people. If your value is really low, then you are not a qualified company as a whole. Last but not least, to see whether project is feasible. Sometimes the idea is good, but out of different purposes, it cannot be implemented. You also need to look at a project with sustainability. You need to avoid investment too scattered around. Last but not least, you also need to value the risk for a project. For example, in a project, does it have bribery or corruption issue in the lower tier of the authorities? As a CSR manager, if you have a right start, if you can integrate the factors together, you also need to know how to communicate. How can you communicate with the stakeholders? I got a 3T principle. The first C is core values. The second C is content, the content that you want to communicate. The third is context. As CSR manager, you need to keep the 3C in mind. When you need to communicate a message, you always need to know its essence whether the core value is in line with your corporate strategy. With the core as the skeleton, you will start to build the content. How can you design your content in a good peripheral context environment? All of the three skill sets are very important for a CSR manager. I have listed some of the tools that might be useful for CSR manager. They include business focus map, market and policy intelligence, community and NGO information, the standard and guidelines for each stakeholder, your project proposal, engagement plan, the template for reporting and research. You need to have a toolbox in hand so you can persuade your senior leaders more easily. You also need to get your elevator speech prepared. If you meet your CEO in the elevator, you can spend a minute to share that with him. Sometimes we do need such a tool to help us. But this super powerful tool never exists. 
You need to do your own work well. So that's what I want to say today. Thank you. Dr. Jan Tong Lu for speaking to us today on how to make CSR applicable and how to make it happen in your company and providing us with a comprehensive toolkit on how to push that in your company. Um, so does anybody have any questions for him? In the back? Thank you very much for the sharing. I'm from Greenpeace Sustainable Development Team. I'm personally very interested about your social return of investment. It is a fairly new industry, which is called AMP investment. The financial institutions will cooperate with the social companies through investment. In addition to the return of investment, they also want to develop some social value. It is fairly new for China. So I would like to ask, do you think this concept will develop further in China? If yes, what do you think the challenge might be? I think, of course, we do have the opportunity. Like Dr. Wang had said, the transition is already started. The social value will be more integrated towards the economic value. Challenges will always be there. In order to put this concept into reality, you need to develop a series of tools for it to be further implemented. The second challenge is more macro ground. How can you integrate yourself with the national strategy and the policy? How can you update the industry that requires further study and discussion? And thank you, Dr. Li. So uh, I should ask first, or you go first. You you go first. Thank you, ladies first. So after listening to Dr. Li's presentation, which is very enterprise specific, because we are from a top protection enterprise, you have talked about CSR. How do do we incorporate that into the strategy? Actually, in our company, we don't have that problem. So we have established CSR as a part of the, our strategy. So we need, so we need to be a good housekeeper and good neighbor of the community and good example of the industry. So three good. So, and for the budget, so how? What is the percentage of the budget for CSR? What will be appropriate? It's a very complicated question. If the enterprise has a foundation, the budget will be fixed, so they need to take about 1% uh, of the revenue. And also for the environmental protection budget, for your business growth, and that will be the foundation as an enterprise. The COD emission in Shandong province is 50. But if you have 200, if you continue that way, you need to be shut down. So you have to install equipment to improve your process and to achieve COD 50. So we can not say how much percentage of the budget should be. But for things not that urgent, but it will be good for the competitiveness in the future, but 
you need to first ensure the supply, the purchase of the raw materials, and purchase of all of those things. You need to study those. If you do that, you will have more opportunities. For example, if you can do a better job in terms of emission, when the government has stricter requirements for the emission, if I can make some investment when we have the capital, so that we can take the lead, and we can also recommend our practice to the industrial association, then we can enhance us to a higher level. These things needs to be done based on the practicalness. Thanks very much. To Dr. Liu, actually, after listening to your presentation about leadership buying, I have a question here. When we define leadership, there are different types. One is groups management, or within a big group, there are different、uh, BU and.、Uh, uh, President. So, as the CSR, when we are having a cross department coordination for different presidents, their attitudes towards、uh, CSR and sustainability will be different because they have different backgrounds. They would think, "Why do we need to do that? We just need to have a good performance." And so. So, can you share us more about the key message to different presidents? This is a very interesting question. This, this is the three C principle about communication. Why I highlight such for on the contact? Actually, you need to speak different language to different people. So, of course. It, So when we are making communication, normally we just send one key message, and we take this one key message to it, and talk to everyone. So we have this project. What kind of benefits it will generate? Actually, for different audience, they are not at the same level as you. So for this message, you need to translate it into. A message that can suit different condition. So when you're talking to the CEO, you don't need to say how good it is. You need to say how much ROI it can generate. And when for different people, you need to talk about its strategy. And when you're talking to R&D, if We work together on this project with suppliers. If we done on fundamental researches with the universities, how can we shorten、uh, the lead time of innovation? So we need to send the key message in different ways so that we can build a communication context. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lu.